In this lesson, we'll take a look at our options for deployment. You can deploy to either an emulator or a device, and we'll take a look at what you need to do to deploy to either, as well as how to make a final build. As we saw in our first lesson, we can deploy to an emulator just by clicking the Start button and starting a debugging session. Previously, I had an emulator already started, but if you don't, let's see if we can start one. We just click on the Start Emulator image, and it will give us all the emulators that are available with the install. When you install Mono for Android, it installs the Android SDK, which includes a number of emulators. So you can select an emulator and start it, and it does take quite a while to start, but after that it's usually available moderately quickly. So since I have one already started, I can use that. But I'll cancel out of that, and you can see it gave me a deployment error because I canceled. So that's a simple way of doing an emulator, but there are a lot of emulator options that you can choose. Under the Tools, we can start the Emulator Manager. And this gives the emulators that we have installed, and we can take a look at one, and we can edit its properties, we can change the size of its SD card, we can change what Android API it uses, we can change the way the display is selected, and some of the other hardware options. We can also, if we look at the device definitions, it has a few of the devices already standardized. You'll note that there are a lot of Google devices. That's not by accident. And we can create an emulator image off of those device images. So there's a lot of things that we can do in this process, but as good as that is, it's not like actually working on a device. The emulator, because you have different screen resolutions between the screen that you're looking at and the emulator itself, you can get a different perspective of what images are going to look like and what color saturation looks like and that sort of thing. Also, the emulator is slow, really slow. And it's very slow in debugging when you hit a breakpoint. So if you're in a complicated debugging session, you'll save a lot of time by actually having a real device hooked up. It's kind of the opposite of the way the old Windows Mobile used to work. In order to debug on the device, however, there are a few things that you need to do, and I'll show them to you on the emulator. You'll need to go into Settings, and down at the bottom there are Developer Options. And before you hook the device up, you'll need to turn on USB debugging. This is before you hook up the USB cable. And that will allow you to debug over the USB. After that, you should be able to hook up the device and deploy basically in the same way you would see it as an emulator. One note to that, Xamarin for Mono comes for free, but that's only if you use it only on an emulator. You can't deploy to an actual device with the free version. So you actually have to pay for a version to be able to deploy to an actual device. The devices just won't show up in the list of deployment options for you if it's not the paid version. So that's essentially the methodology on how to deploy a debug session. But we, of course, want to actually ship our app at some point, and we may just want to ship a test version and not go through the complication of going through the Play Store. So to do that, we need to create the APK. So we change our build to release, we rebuild our solution, and after that's done, we package our application for Android, creating an APK, an Android package file. And our package has been successfully built. Now that our package is successfully built, it'll be in the release directory, and we actually have two APKs, and one is signed. That's typically the one you want to send to anyone who you want to test the application. If it's not signed, there are all sorts of security warnings, and it may not work at all on their device. So those are the basic deployment options and how to deploy to a device. At the end of the course, we'll take a look at how to actually publish the application for real in Google Play.